everyone, and welcome to Paris. After our last flight with Tunis Air, we spent a week in London, and then caught the Eurostar to the French capital. Paris is definitely a beautiful city, but the real reason we crossed the English Channel was so that we could take a flight with an airline that's been on my list for a while, and that's a budget airline called French B. So after two great days of sightseeing, we bid farewell to Paris and headed to the airport. French B is based out of Orly Airport's Terminal 4. Before Charles de Gaulle opened in 1974, Orly acted as Paris's main airport. But nowadays, this airport, which is located about 8 miles south of Paris, plays host to a lot of low-cost airlines and carriers who operate flights to holiday destinations. French B's check-in area was located all the way to the left once we entered the airport. There were a lot of self-service kiosks, but since we were flying premium blue today, we were able to use the dedicated premium check-in area. Our premium blue fares allowed us to check two bags for free, and we got to use the priority security screening lanes. However, lounge access wasn't included, but you could book it separately for 40 euros. This was my first time traveling through Orly though, so I was happy to explore the airport rather than sitting in a lounge before boarding. I was impressed by Terminal 4. It had a cool retro feel, and there were plenty of shops and places to eat. I also spotted a couple of these PS5 areas, which are pretty cool too. I'll be flying aboard this A350-900 for this 7-hour flight to Newark. French B only operates the A350, and has two of the 1000 variants, and four of these 900s. Their entire fleet is only about 4 years old, and serve popular tourist destinations like the New York City area and LA. As it got closer to boarding, the gate area began to get crowded, and once it was time to get on the plane, things got pretty chaotic. There was a dedicated lane for premium passengers, and we were allowed to board first, but it seemed like everyone was trying to board through the premium lane regardless of what their ticket said, and we had to wade through a sea of people. We made it through eventually though, and made our way to the plane. There's a total of 39 premium seats in a 232 configuration, and I'll be sitting in 8K. There isn't a proper business class on board, but rather premium B is made up of premium economy seats that are a bit narrower and have less legroom than what you'll find on larger legacy airlines. Although I actually found the seats to be pretty comfortable, and the legroom really wasn't that bad. A blanket and a pillow was waiting for us at our seats. The pillow was large and had the French B logo on it, but the blanket was the same type that you get in economy. I didn't really mind though, because the cabin was kept a little bit warm and there were no overhead air vents. I had a good first impression of the seat. They reclined and had an adjustable headrest. There was a large IFE screen in the seat back, which had a USB port on the side of it. There was also this storage pouch below the screen, which was large enough to hold a lot of my things. And you could find a water bottle holder down by your feet. There was a large armrest between you and your neighbor, and the tray table pulled out of it like this. A control for the IFE system can be found down here in the armrest, and each seat has its own universal outlet. I also found that there was plenty of room in the overhead bins for our bags. There was also a large gap between the seat and the side here, which came in handy for storing things. The crew handed out pre-departure drinks, which I wasn't expecting, and we had a choice of water, champagne, and orange juice. And then they handed out these amenity kits, which I really wasn't expecting. Inside there were some socks, an eye mask, earplugs, a toothbrush and toothpaste, and some headphones. Prior to the creation of this airline, the executives at French B actually tried to buy Corsair from Tui Group, but that fell through in 2015 and they formed a completely new airline instead. We pushed back from the gate a little late and headed out to the runway. Uh, 
the weather on the whiteboard is forecast to be uh, partially cloudy, maybe a few thunderstorms, but nothing significant. This airline was initially launched under the name French Blue, but they ran into issues when applying to begin services to the U.S. after JetBlue raised objections to another airline serving the country bearing the word blue in its name. So in response, they rebranded themselves as French Bee in 2018. After we reached cruising altitude, the crew handed out a bottle of water and a hot towel. Then the lady in front of me reclined her seat all the way back and I became trapped. This was my main complaint about traveling in premium blue. When the seat in front was fully reclined, it left hardly any room to move. The crew began the snack and drink service shortly after this and I wasn't even able to put my trade table down. Thankfully though, a flight attendant had her raise her seat back up so I could enjoy this bag of crackers and some water. While I waited for dinner to be served, I took a look at the IFE system. The screen itself was large and responsive, but there was a fairly limited number of movies and TV shows on offer. They did have music and games to choose from, and there was a digital menu that listed food and drinks that you could buy. Wi-Fi was also available for purchase, and plans ranged from $4 to $29. Dinner was served about an hour and a half after takeoff, and was included in the price of the premium ticket. You could choose between chicken or fish, and each entree was served with the shrimp salad, some cheese, bread, and a dessert. The cutlery was also metal. I decided to go with the chicken, which was mainly just rice, pineapple, and not very much chicken. My wife's a vegan, so she wasn't able to eat any of the entrees, so she ordered the fish so I could see what it was like. The fish was a little bit better than the chicken, but neither meal was anything special. This was my second major complaint about French Bee. While the chicken and fish meals were included in the premium fare, if you had a special dietary requirement, then you needed to pay for a special meal. So if my wife wanted to have some food that she could actually eat, then she would have had to pay $35 for their vegan option, which we both thought wasn't worth it. Especially considering that the food wasn't all that good. After dinner was cleared away, the crew gave out tea and coffee and asked everyone to close their window shades. The lights were dimmed and I began to watch some stuff on my tablet. And then the lady in front of me reclined her seat all the way back again and almost crushed my tablet. You can see here that it ended up going in the gap between the IFE screen and the seat back. I don't think that I would have actually damaged my tablet if the seat hit it, but my original plan was to do some work on my laptop, and if I had gone forward with that plan then my computer would have been completely destroyed, so I got lucky. There are a lot of people who would blame the person in front of me if that happened, but I really think it would be the airline's fault for allowing the seat to recline that much. I mean, I was completely trapped in my seat again, and it was made a lot worse because I had my tray table out. Again, I'm not angry with the person in front of me, but I did think it was funny that I saw her complaining when the person in front of her reclined their seat all the way, and then she did the exact same thing to me. You'll be happy to know, though, that I only reclined my own seat a little bit, so I wouldn't annoy the person behind me. Being trapped for the next few hours wasn't ideal, but I didn't need to use the restroom or anything, so I just watched some movies on my tablet and explored the IFE system a bit more. Eventually though, the cabin lights were turned back on and the crew began to prep to serve the pre-landing snack, which meant that the lady in front of me was woken up and asked to raise her seat. Now that I was freed from my prison, I took the opportunity to use the restroom before I was served the last meal. There was one restroom at the front of the cabin that was reserved for premium passengers. I filmed this towards the end of the flight and I thought the restroom was nice and clean.
I got back to my seat as the flight attendants began to serve my aisle. The pre-landing snack wasn't anything elaborate and it was just some vanilla pudding and warm pastries. By the time this was cleared away, we were pretty close to Newark and the crew began to prep the cabin for landing. Uh, we are starting our descent down to uh, Newark. Landing expected in uh, 33 minutes from now. I hope that you managed to get some rest on board our Airbus 350. Thank you once again for choosing French B. The food left a lot to be desired, and there were definitely some design flaws with the seat, but this was a nice flight overall. Originally I wanted to book this flight in economy, but then I looked into it a bit more and found out that French B crammed 376 seats into the economy cabin in a 10 abreast configuration. So I checked out their premium section and saw that it was going for $500, which was only $200 more than their basic economy fare, and I went ahead and booked it. And I'm really glad that I did. After a few weeks abroad, we were traveling with a lot of luggage, so having two complimentary checked bags was great and we definitely took advantage of all the space in the overhead bin. While the seat wasn't perfect, I did find it comfortable overall and I felt nice and relaxed after this trip across the Atlantic. So if you come across a good deal with French Bee, don't be afraid to snatch it up. I definitely know I'll be flying with them again. And that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.